Well, hello, people of God. It's good to be with you on Wednesday and to open God's Word with you once again. Uh, and once again today, I want to be looking at Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, um, that uh, part of the Beatitudes that we thought about yesterday. Uh, we thought particularly what it means to be poor in spirit. So we looked at that particular verse from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, where Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we talked about what it means to be poor in spirit. It means to lack spiritual resources, to have nothing to offer before the Lord. Um, and it might be hard to see from thinking about it that way, how being poor in spirit is a good thing. Um, is it really a good thing to be um, lacking in all spiritual resources? Well, of course, it's not a blessing in and of itself to be poor in spirit. Um, but it is a blessing when Jesus comes to us in our spiritual poverty and promises all the resources we need uh, from the kingdom of heaven itself. And so if we, if we ever feel downcast by thinking about our own spiritual poverty and the lack of resources that we have in ourselves, um, we ought immediately to turn our minds to think about the resources that we have in Jesus Christ. And what Jesus is really driving at is that all Christians recognize their own poverty in spirit so that they might look to him for all they need and rejoice. Um, Jesus wants us to understand that we are poor in spirit, uh, that we do lack spiritual resources in and of ourselves. But, he so, but then he says, rejoice, for I will give you all that you need. The kingdom of heaven is yours. The kingdom of heaven will provide for you will provide for your salvation. Um, and so we were spiritually without resources, um, in debt to sin and trespass, but the king came and paid our debt. He paid the debt we owed. He settled all of our spiritual bankruptcy. Uh, by his death and resurrection, Jesus has set us free from God's divine judgment against sin. He's provided what we couldn't provide for ourselves, uh, the payment for sin and the positive righteousness that we owed before the living God. And so the kingdom of heaven has come to the rescue of those who are poor in spirit, and the kingdom of heaven will provide the resources necessary for us to live the Christian life. We don't have resources in ourselves, but the kingdom of heaven is abundant in resources. Um, and that's the good news that comes to us in this parable. The kingdom of heaven will provide the resources you need to live the Christian life. The king has already poured out the greatest gift of his kingdom. Jesus has poured out his Holy Spirit upon us. The Spirit has come to tabernacle with us. The Spirit speaks to us the word that has been given to him by Jesus Christ. And he makes his dwelling with us forever to sanctify us after the image of Christ in heaven. So the disciples of Jesus Christ who have nothing in themselves, who are poor in spirit, are yet blessed, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Of heaven and so we need to remember that although we are poor in spirit we are blessed we are blessed now and we are blessed forever now, the kingdom of heaven is theirs now, notice Jesus does not say the kingdom of heaven will be theirs um, that it will be yours one day that there's an inheritance waiting for you and it's a great inheritance but you don't have it yet um, and and we need to hear that word from Jesus the kingdom of heaven is a kingdom of grace that is ours now. Um, it's a kingdom of grace in this world. Um, as members of the church, we experience the blessings of his kingdom now. That kingdom of grace where we hear his, we hear his word, we partake of the sacraments, we experience the spiritual care of the church. We, we fellowship with one another as membership, members of the church. Uh, there's that, that corporate identity we enjoy and that participation in the kingdom of grace we enjoy even now. And individually, as I said, the Spirit is making us new creatures in Christ. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is being born anew in us. We're being transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his marvelous light. We're being fitted for that kingdom citizenship even now. Uh, we are citizens of heaven, uh, Paul reminds us. And so we're being fitted out by the Holy Spirit. So we have all those wonderful resources now. Um, but the promise is both for now and for the future. So theirs is the kingdom of heaven now, and as we experience it now, it's a kingdom of grace, but one day that kingdom of grace will be for us a kingdom of glory. 
Uh, we are poor in spirit every day of our lives, but one day we will go to Christ in glory. Um, and then all of our spiritual poverty will be done away with. The fullness of the riches of his kingdom will come to us. And we will be glorified and be like Jesus and see him. Um, and that means the kingdom is ours. It's ours now as a kingdom of grace. It will be ours in the future as a kingdom of glory. And the amazing thing about what Jesus says here is it's just ours. We don't need to do something spectacular to obtain it. We're not like, you know, knights in fairy tales who are promised great rewards but have to go on some great, re great quest before they can claim their reward or claim their kingdom. Um, it's nothing like that. In fact, just the opposite is true. Um, as one commentator put it, we don't need to be right to enter his kingdom. We don't need to be powerful. We don't need to be beautiful. We don't need to be clever. We don't even need to have lived a particularly good life. All that we need is to be poor in spirit, empty in ourselves, so that we can be filled with the righteousness of God. We thought yesterday of Samson. We, we often think of his many failings. We think of his great strength, but his great strength that was so often put in pursuit of ends that were not God's ends, uh, goals that were not God's goals. Um, and so we remember him as being spectacularly strong and also spectacularly weak when it came to spiritual things. Um, and yet, how does God remember him? As I mentioned yesterday, God remembers him for his faith. One who was poor in spirit, but rich in the kingdom of heaven. Um, think again of what Hebrews 11, 32 through 38 says. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, the prophets, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy. How does God remember Samson for his faith, for being one who enforced justice, who stopped the mouths of lions, who was made strong out of weakness, who suffered mocking and flogging, chains and imprisonment, who was destitute, afflicted, mistreated, and of whom the world was not worthy. I don't know how you feel about when you read that passage. I take great comfort from that. Um, I take great comfort from that because of just how flawed the people on that list were. Um, and yet, how does the Holy Spirit direct us to remember them? As those who are rich in the kingdom of heaven. That those who by faith were heirs of eternal life and were given all the possessions that are even Christ Jesus's. Uh, they are remembered as those of whom the world is not worthy. Citizens of the kingdom of heaven and heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. And so we should never forget that we are poor in spirit as Christians. We should never pr forget just how much we need uh, from the Lord. We shouldn't be surprised when we find that we don't have in ourselves the resources we need to live a life that's pleasing to God. But remember when you come to God and have nothing to say but have mercy on me, a sinner. Remember this pronouncement of the Lord Jesus Christ, that those who are poor in spirit are blessed. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those who have no resources in themselves are granted the great resources, the endless and bottomless resources of the kingdom of heaven. Resources that can never be exhausted and are always 
able to meet our needs. So remember the kingdom of Christ that you enjoy now, that kingdom that is yours, that kingdom of grace that comes to all of us now, and that kingdom of glory that's coming again when the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, returns in glory. But until that day, as those who are poor in spirit, let us remember that we are blessed. That we are blessed because we are poor in spirit. Not because we're poor in spirit, but because those who are poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's pray now and thank God for the resources he's given us in Jesus Christ. Father, once again, we come having nothing to plead before you. No, no goodness in ourselves, no, no contribution that we can make to your kingdom. We are truly poor in spirit. But help us to not despair in our situation, but to be reminded by the blessed words of our Lord Jesus Christ that for those who are poor in spirit, we, we, can, we are blessed because ours is the kingdom of heaven. We thank you that our Lord Jesus Christ has come to us in our spiritual poverty and given us from his great inheritance. The, everything that is his is now ours, uh, that he has given that to us. That by faith we share in Christ and all of his benefits, that we enjoy the, the marvelous blessings of the kingdom of grace even now, that as we see Christ's kingdom as a kingdom of grace in this world being built, by spiritual means through the ministry of the church and the ministry of the spirit in the hearts of individuals. We thank you to see that kingdom of grace that we participate in even now and the rich blessings that it is to us. And we anticipate that kingdom that will be ours one day in glory when the kingdom of grace becomes the kingdom of glory at the return of Jesus Christ, then all things will be made new. And the fullness of that kingdom in its completeness and consummation will come upon us and we will be changed, that we will be brought up again in resurrected life, raised on the last day by Christ as he promised, and know that there will be in that new life no more poverty, no more weakness, no more sin, but we will be raised with that imperishable, indestructible, holy life that our Lord lives now. How we long for that day, but help us to remember in these evil days that we are still blessed that we are blessed as those who are poor in spirit but those who possess the kingdom of heaven thanks be to christ for so rich a gift thank you father for sending him to us thank you for the spirit who keeps us united to christ and hear us we pray in jesus name amen right people of god it's been good to spend this time thinking about the blessings of the kingdom of heaven with you i pray the lord will bless you and keep you in the days ahead.